Hi, I'm Wes, the Sewing Machine Repair Guy, and today we're going to be learning about timing. How, what is timing? And how does that affect how your sewing machine works? And how do you fix it if it's wrong? Well, let's find out as we dive into today's subject, timing. Now keep in mind, this is the fourth video in a five video series. So make sure you take a look at the other videos before watching this one because this does build on some of the topics that we've already learned in the past. Also, timing is a huge subject and it's actually going to be a smaller video if you didn't notice already. I cannot touch every little bit of timing for every sewing machine. So my goal today is to teach you the basics of timing and how to fix it on every sewing machine. Make sure you look into specific videos on your sewing machine because there are tons of videos out there on YouTube. After you watch this video and learn what timing is, take a look at some of those videos so that you can learn how to set the timing on your sewing machine. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now we're going to be looking at three different types of timing in this video for your sewing machine. There's the needle to hook timing. The hook meets the needle as the needle is on its upstroke. So you can see here in the slow motion that needle is going down and then it's just, you see the hook just come around right above the eye of that needle. And then we have the feed dog timing. The feed dogs move the fabric when the needle is not in the fabric. So as you can see, the needle comes down and then as it comes up, those feed dogs come out, they move the fabric and it, they come right back down right before that needle moves. And then we have the zigzag Needle left to right movement happens when the needle is not in the fabric. So this is your zigzag timing. So in this video, we're going to learn the two basic rules of timing. There's only two. So the two rules, we're going to start with rule number one. And then later in the video, we'll get to rule number two. Rule number one is the hook must catch the thread on the upstroke of the needle. As that needle is coming up, the thread forms a loop. As you can see here, you get a little loop as that needle's coming up and that thread forms a loop. And that loop is what the hook is going to come through to catch the thread. I'm teaching you the basic theory so you can apply it to every machine. So we even look at this machine from 1897. That needle comes down, it comes up a little bit, forms that loop, and the hook on that shuttle grabs the thread and makes our loop. That's how we make a stitch. So you notice the needle comes up a little bit. In this case, this one bounces a little bit and you don't see that in modern machines, but that's just how they designed this machine to make that loop. So let's see a more modern machine and how it does this. So here's our more modern machine. And as that needle's coming down, comes down and then as it's on its way up, that hook goes right past that needle. And it's really close to that needle. You'll see here in the next one, but right there, just right above the eye of that needle, which is where that thread's coming through and forms that loop right at the right time for that hook to come around and grab the thread from the needle. Then on this side, you see that the hook's coming around and it is really close to that needle. I mean, really close. You are about a tenth of a millimeter away when that hook comes around to grab that thread from that needle. In fact, when you look at a needle, it's indented right there. It's got a little indent and that's where that hook goes through. Just amazing machinery. All right, we got this machine set up. We got our zigzag stitch set up on our widest stitch width and uh, 1.5 on stitch length, which is just a little bit lower than middle. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so we've been doing a zigzag, but what's coming out is a straight stitch. So what this means is our needle thread is being picked up by the hook on the right side, but not on the left side. So our timing's a little bit off. Let's take a look at our timing. We want to see the hook position relative to the needle position. We know that the right side is actually picking up the thread and the left side is not. So let's see if we can figure out why. Now the first thing you have to do when you're 
looking at this is you got to set your needle bar height um, because that's a very important parameter when you're talking about your timing. Your needle bar height is going to tell you how high this needle is. And the height of the needle plays a huge part in the timing of your machine, your hook to your needle, because you're timing where that hook hits the needle and when, right? So you are you got to have your needle at the correct height. I've already checked this machine. For that, it's a little bit more difficult for me to describe here. Um, I do recommend you check out manuals, your service manuals, because they tell you what measurements to look at for that. So when that hole of the needle comes around and the hook is coming around to catch the thread, see how the hole of the needle is up above where that hook is coming in? So the hook has missed the needle. And then when you come around on the other side, now it's the right hand side, see how the needle is coming down further to the right. Now when the needle comes by, the needle is right there, right at the eye of the needle. So we need to adjust this so that we will catch this at the right time. I want to look underneath my machine and I want to see what adjustment I have to make in order to change the hook position relative to the needle position. So the needle position is determined by the upper shaft on your machine. The hook position is determined by this lower shaft on the machine. And I want to shift my hook with relation to the shaft. If you look on this, you'll notice you've got a gear right here that has a set screw in it. I've got a cam right here which moves this thing and if I turn, you'll notice that that moves up and down. And then I go further and then I've got a gear over here which does have set screws as well. And this gear has a belt attached to it. So if I were to adjust this gear right here, that would be a mistake. And the reason for that is there are two things that get adjusted, that, uh, two things that are connected here. One is this cam right here, and the other is our gear going to our hook. This cam controls your, your feed dogs. So this, is how, this controls the feed dog motion going up and down. And that timing, as far as we know, is good. The timing that's off is just the hook. So now I gotta look over here. So if I adjusted this gear with relation to the shaft, I would end up adjusting the timing for both the feed dogs and the hook. And I don't wanna do that. I just wanna adjust the hook. So we go over here. And then we're going to adjust this just a little bit. And you know, uh, you can you can get it pretty close by looking at the hook while you're adjusting this. And really, what you do is you just want to adjust a little bit. So I've got a little bit of play in there. So I'm just going to bring it down. Let's see what happens when I bring it down and tighten it. Now I'm not putting a lot of torque on these, I'm just tightening it so it'll stay still so that we can figure out and fine tune our timing. This is an electronic machine so every time we do this we have to turn it on and select our stitch. Alright, so I'm going to bring you in here. We've selected our stitch. Coming down the left. And look at that. So our hook is coming in below that, or right above the eye of the needle. So that's good. And now we're on the right, we're coming down. And as we're coming back up, we are still above the eye of the needle, so that's good too. 
Now it's time to actually sew and see if that actually fixed it. If you remember from last time, the only time the hook caught the thread was on the right hand side of the zigzag. So now we're going to try and see if we can catch it on both sides. See if we fixed our timing problem. And that looks like we caught our timing problem. So that looks pretty good. When you look in a new machine that you haven't looked into before, you gotta look for a few things. So if you're gonna do your hook timing on a machine, um, you've gotta figure out how do I adjust the timing when I don't, where I don't adjust something that I don't want to adjust. That was a couple of negatives. So I wanna make sure I'm only adjusting the hook timing. So one thing you have to look for are flat faces. So take a look right in here. If you look right here, you'll see there's a flat face. So this set screw right here will not be able to change. Like if I turn this gear and you know loosen that set screw, turn the gear and tighten it again, it's not designed to do that because there's a flat face here. It wants to be in this spot. So you have to watch for that. And sometimes they're harder to find. And we can follow over here. These are the two gears that typically wear out on these machines that you would have to replace. And when you replace these, that does mess up your timing between the feed and your, and your hook. So you have to be careful for that and make sure that you get your feed and your hook adjusted properly after you mess with these and remove these gears because you end up removing the shafts uh, at least most of the way through. So you end up removing a lot of stuff to get into those where these gears are to replace them and the timing will get messed up on this machine. You'll have to reset your timing. Rule number two, the needle can only move up and down through the fabric. Here's our fabric. Here's our needle. So it can only move up and down through this fabric. That seems pretty simple, pretty easy, but when you're timing a machine, you can't have the zigzag trying to move this needle while, the fabric, while it's inside the fabric. Now there are some machines that are designed that they move the fabric along with moving the needle, and that's okay. That's what you call a walking foot machine because that needle will go down and the fabric will feed. It's a needle feed machine. And it's designed to do that, but those are industrial machines. And right now we're talking about your home machine. But whenever this needle is down in the fabric, it can't be moving. And so basically what we're talking about is a zigzag where it's gonna go boom, 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 boom. When it's coming down, it's gotta be going straight up and down and then come up and then move over and then go down and then come up and then move over and it'll make this parabola. So let's see this work in slow motion. And what you can see here is the parabola, which is the shape that that needle makes when it's doing a zigzag stitch every time. So at the bottom of that stitch, it's going straight up and down. And then when it comes up out of the fabric, that's when the needle moves over to the left or to the right in order to make the other stitch on the other side of that zigzag. And machines do this differently, so you have electronic machines that do it with uh, uh, stepper motors that move that needle. And then you have older machines that use linkages, so the adjustment for this is vastly different from machine to machine. So not only do you have uh, the zigzag for the needle having to be timed perfectly so that uh, you meet rule number two, you also have the feeding of the fabric, which has to meet rule number two. And in this case, you can see as the needle comes up out of the fabric, the feed dogs come up to grab the fabric against the presser foot. Remember, there's a presser foot on top that's sandwiching that fabric. So these feed dogs come up, grab that fabric and move it when the needle's not in the fabric. And then they come down and allow that when they're resetting underneath there 
Now your needle goes into the fabric because the fabric's not moving. And it's a little easier to see once you have the uh, needle plate on and you see how the feed dogs disappear below that plate when they reset to go back to the front. So our two rules of timing are rule number one, the hook must catch the thread on the upstroke of the needle. And rule number two, the needle can only move up and down when it's inside the fabric. So I've used these two rules, these two basic rules uh, to be able to time the most difficult machines, even some old bar tack machines that uh, they looked really complex and they were really complex, but all you have to have are those basic rules. A bar tack machine moved the fabric around and this was seat belt material and it was trying to move that material while the needle was inside the material. And when I was able to time that correctly, those machines worked uh, much better and that factory was put back into full production cap capacity. I'm gonna have a couple of resources for you in the description for this video. One of them, if you're working on old singers, TNT Repair is an awesome website and he's got a lot of really good information on there as well as he sells some manuals and he sells some other things that you need if you're working on an old singer machine and timing that machine because there are so many different adjustments on, and so many different machines. Uh, he just has a way of explaining it that makes it easy and his manuals, I've used them over and over again for various machines. If you learned something today and you want to give back to the channel, feel free to take a look at our description. We have a Patreon page where you can be a member. If you're a Master Mechanic level patron, you get to watch these videos early and you can even provide feedback on the videos. Another way you can support the channel just by doing what you normally do every day is you can click on one of the Amazon affiliate links below and then go and buy something else on Amazon and we still get a portion of that to help the channel. Those are ways you can help support the channel so that we can continue to bring great content to you. And boy, have we got some things coming up. I can't wait to show you some of the things that we have standing by for new videos after this series is complete. Thanks for watching. It won't move. What kind of problems are we going to have there? Yeah, that's not good. Okay, if you remember from before, we had a right hand stitch only. Now we just adjusted our hook timing, and now we're going to sew and see if it's if it catches up the way it should. That's what happens when you're not going through your upper tension. In case you were wondering from last video, little review there. 